What's going on, everybody? We are continuing our uh, re-go-through? How would you say it? Like going back over uh, the intel from Cold War as we're getting prepped for Gulf War coming up this fall. Uh, trying to glean whatever clues we can from where the storyline was and to where it is heading. Uh, at the end of all of this, I will give you my theory on where... Well, not even theory. I just... Something I think could happen, how Gulf War could start. Um, but we're not going to do that until... <laughs> what's up, Volatile? You do still hold the title of being first. Um, we're not going to do that until the very end. So um, we've got another at least day of this. If, if this basically the same amount of intel from yesterday. We did preseason in season one. We're going to do season two, season three. Maybe season four. Um, I don't even remember this declassified log stuff. I genuinely do not remember this. Flat out don't remember that. So uh, we're not going to worry about that at the moment. Uh, so I don't know if we're going to get through it tomorrow night or maybe Monday night or whenever. I don't know. Uh, but let's just jump in because there, it, it's, we were going for three hours yesterday. And we got just got through the, those two seasons. So let's just jump in. Not waste any time. So we're at Firebase Z, basically. And by the way, I gotta point out. So as you see, we're just gonna take this from like Requiem. We're gonna go through all the Requiem stuff. Then we're gonna go through all of Omega stuff. Then we're gonna go through all of Maxis, Dark Ether. That's not the order with which all of the intel was released. So we're gonna get stuff from Requiem and these logs from like uh, one through seven. And stuff that's like first, maybe like the first thing that came out during the, the you know, during the release of season two. But then the stuff from seven, it's going to be like well after stuff from stuff that came out in, you know, Maxis or Omega or Dark Ether. It's just like, there's no way for us to like go through cr chronologically how er uh, everything was laid out to us, how it was given to us. So we're just going to take it section by section. And if we, you know, re it's not even going to be a repeat, but if we cover, you know, uh, familiar ground. That's why. Uh, so, okay. Focal point. Requiem Berlin Station. Chief Meyer wants, uh, warns Weaver about a developing situation in the divided German capital. This is Heinrich Meyer, Station Chief Berlin, Office of Requiem. Weaver, we have a developing situation over here. Reliable human places Dr. Alexandra Valentina of KGB Spetsnaz Omega Group here in West Berlin. She was observed scouting several locations in the city. Objective unknown. This is very distressing, to say the least. Dr. Valentina is directly involved with Omega's interdimensional research. If she is here expecting or intending for something to happen, Weaver, we have been very fortunate so far that most of Omega's operations have been in remote, rural areas. Berlin, on the other hand, is the focal point of the Cold War. The world is always watching us. If they were to launch an op here... I have a team trying to intercept her communications. I will alert you should they succeed. Uh, Mitchell, fair enough, man. <laughs> if you stop talking, you're asleep. I get it. Uh, no worries. Um, so this is basically the precursor to what's coming in My Order Toten. Valentina is in West Berlin. She's looking at scouting out different places, doing whatever this is means. It's just what's coming up with uh, My Order Toten, which was kind of odd because um, what was next? Uh, you got up at 2 a.m. You've been up since 2 a.m. now. Jeez, dude. Yeah. Uh, well, my boy should put you to sleep anytime soon. Uh, so you're welcome and have a good night. Just leave me playing on the background. Um, but again, you know, like from Firebase Z to Mauer, we had both Outbreak um, Easter eggs come out. And it was a big gap. Like I said yesterday, uh, they had released Firebase Z early because Cold War Zombies was doing very well. D-Machine had a great response. Lots of people playing it. And they were like, hey, man, um, you know, let's... What, let's strike while the iron's hot and they put out Firebase Z we played that, we are doing all that kind of stuff and then it was this massive gap and it was just like tumbleweeds man for months and months so we went from November 
We got a map in D Machina then beginning of sometime around the beginning to mid January. We got Firebase Z. We got it early when we're thinking like, man, we're going to get extra maps and all this kind of stuff. It's going to be great. And then months went by before we got anything else. Outbreak. Strauss shares some thoughts about the dangers of Ethereum harvesting. The Ethereum harvesting unit. To the layman, it's not terribly impressive. Just a metal box with a canister in it. By the way, sorry. Uh, something I forgot to mention. I mean, I mentioned it yesterday, but just in case you weren't here yesterday. This title here, when it says, uh, so we've got Like Flies to Honey, then we have Outbreak. And then Strauss shares some thoughts about the dangers of Ethereum harvesting. Outbreak, where it says Outbreak, or it might say Firebase Z, it could say D Machine, it could say Mauer, whatever. That's where we got this intel from. So we're talking about Ethereum harvesting. Obviously, you guys remember that as an objective, a mission, a goal, a contract, whatever you call it back in um, Cold War Outbreak. So this is from Outbreak. So keep that in mind when you are uh, listening to these things. Got your phone charger on. All right, fair enough. The Ethereum harvesting unit. To the layman, it's not terribly impressive. Just a metal box with a canister in it. Quietly sitting there, sucking in airborne Ethereum particles. But there is a reason my science teams risk their lives to place these units across the zone. With Ethereum concentrations greater in the Ural Mountains than anywhere else on Earth, these harvesting units are absolutely vital in our race against the Soviets to harness the power of the Dark Ether. Once filled, each canister must be collected for rocket transport to international waters. We considered other modes of travel, but rockets really are the quickest, cleanest way to get the samples out of the outbreak zone. Which is not to say retrieving these canisters is easy. They are heavy, cumbersome things, and once disengaged from the harvesting unit, there is a limited amount of time to get them to the rocket before... The okay, I, 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 I'm going to try to speed this stuff up a little bit. That was literally just describing how to do that particular outbreak mission. I don't need to go into that stuff. You guys have done it a million times, Ethereum harvesting. We've done it a million times. I, I, so when this stuff like that comes up, I'm just going to kind of... I will scan ahead and uh, kind of move things along. You don't need to hear him go through that stuff kind of stuff over and over and over again. Fair enough. And I shut the light off because... Uh, reading through this stuff here, it's a light background on screen, plus a light right here. It's very, like, uh, very reflective, and it's just killing my eyes. So, lights off. You got this light over here. should still be fine. You guys can still see me. I don't even think... I, I'm thinking about getting rid of the webcam, to be honest with you. Anyway, whatever. Um, a, this is the next one. A Grizzly Affair. This is from Outbreak as well. Dr. Gray muses about the risks and rewards of Dark Ether Specimen Analyzer. This is Dr. Elizabeth Gray, with a few thoughts on <coughs> new specimen analyzer stations. We're using them to run field tests on undead anatomy. Specifically, genetic mutations and structural changes in the cerebral cortex. It's a rather... grisly affair. Severing some poor infected bloke's head and putting it in a jar for a proper soft tissue mapping and DNA sequencing. But if we can identify the root stimuli and catalysts for all these physical transformations, will be one step closer to preventing them. Unfortunately, those heads aren't quite deceased. And they seem to call out to the other infected in the area. I say... Okay, so you guys remember this uh, objective as well, is when you went and picked up the head and then you put it in the uh, spectrum analyzer or whatever it was, and then it basically set off alarms and then all the zombies come running. It's again just literally describing how to do this particular objective in Outbreak. Don't need to say, uh, go over much more of that. Okay, uh, I see a hierarchy outbreak. Carver discusses hunting high-value targets. This is going to be the exact same thing. It's going to tell us about how we get the HPTs. Our HPT. strike team is taking down a lot of different hostels, some bigger and badder than others. Every encounter is a risk to life and limb. But as far as my containment and security division is concerned, we learn... Okay, I just scanned through it. You can pause it if you want to, if you're watching this as a VOD. But it's literally just how to do that. Again, that mission, HVTs, we've done them all a million times. You've seen me do them a million times if you haven't done them, so don't need to spend any more time with it. Quantum Entanglement, Outbreak. Strauss prepares a memo to the strike team about the use of essence conversion modules. I think this is going to be basically the same thing, so let's just give Energy it a quick Energy research listen. voice memo to Requiem strike team from Dr. Oscar Strauss. Subject, 
the proper care and feeding of essence conversion modules. First, the modules are currently in orbit. You must call them down with the launch control station we've already placed in the outbreak zone. Trust me, it's simple enough that... Again, that's the exact same thing. That's the two rockets that come down from the sky. You get kills within the uh, plasma circle. You fill them up, you go to the next one. That's it. Um, we don't need to go over that. Uh, recon Rover Blues Outbreak Gray records some thoughts on the Dark Ether Recon Rover and the living payload it carries. Now, this might be a little interesting, and this is one of those things where how from D Machine, well, we'll listen to it, but remember in D Machine, we have the, the goat, when you go to the Dark Ether and you find the ghost monkeys, there is, um, I made a whole video on this too, kind of explaining like it's solved, the mystery is solved. It's not an Easter egg to complete on D Machina. It's just a clue about what was going on in, during the game. The Recon Rover. Oh, this is a tough one for me. I mean, yes, I recognize the absolute need to send monkeys into the Dark Ether. It's the only way to record that dimension's effects on the physiology, and it's certainly a lot less risky than sending in my people, but oh, I really do need to stop naming those monkeys. Anyhow, here's how it works. We leave a Dark Ether Recon Rover parked in an area where we've recorded instability in the dimensional membrane. Our strike team activates the rover and then do their best to keep the Nazis off until it can successfully enter a rift and start sending back telemetry. The data we're getting is remarkable. I'm starting to understand how Ethereum transmutes living organisms on a cellular level. We've even recorded the specific moment when the subject starts metabolizing Ethereum to continue functioning post-mortem. It's just difficult reviewing the data. They scream once they cross over. A lot. And then they go quiet. And then they start to laugh. Okay, so as you see, when we've done, you know, we're doing that escort step, and there's the monkey in the cage, and you go from, um, there's basically two different versions of it. One where it just scans the rift, and then it just keeps going, and the monkey stays as the monkey. But there's the one where it goes through the portal, and then it, like, Land, you know, goes up to the sky and lands like a hundred yards away or whatever. <clears throat> then all of a sudden the monkey is no longer there. Um, it's the same for both because at the end of the one where you scan, the it gets teleported into the dark ether anyway. Um, it goes into the rift, right? Uh, so what's happening to these monkeys that we're teleport uh, transporting and as they go into these rifts, that's why it'll change into... It can change into a power-up drop, it can just change into a pile of goo, it can be whatever. Um, but the monkeys, the reason why you see the monkeys in the Dark Ether on D Machina is because we are sending them, doing this objective on Outbreak, we are sending them to the Dark Ether. So we're basically banishing them to the Dark Ether. And the whole thing at the very end is they scream once they cross over a lot. Then they go quiet, so it hurts to do it. Then they go quiet, meaning they're kind of, well, you can imagine, right? They're kind of, picture them curled up into the fetal position, scared and don't know what the hell's going on. Uh, and then they start to laugh. They go crazy. So, uh, doing bad things to the monkeys in this game. Gotta be honest. Killer crystals. Uh, outbreak. Carver knows what the huge Ethereum crystals power nodes are, uh, what they're up to, and why they must be destroyed on site. This is going to be the uh, holdout objective, so we'll listen to it very quickly, but then we'll probably move on and not listen to the whole thing. We've identified certain Ethereum crystal structures in the outbreak zone that the lab coats are calling power nodes. They're the biggest crystals out there, almost beautiful in their own way. But if what the experts are telling me is true, they are scary as hell. My people have determined these power nodes are here to fundamentally alter the environment. It's a process they call terraforming. Basically, they're slowly transforming the air and ground around them to make it more hospitable to the creatures crossing over from the Dark Aether. They do this by continually releasing Ethereum in its gaseous form. And we know that the only thing keeping those monsters inside the outbreak zones is their proximity to an Ethereum source. They wander too far away, and they drop dead. We've recorded all this on our instruments, but you don't need any equipment to know how powerful one of those crystals is. All you have to do is get up close to a power node, and it feels like... I don't know. Like the shrooms are kicking in. Yeah, I said it. I saw some shit in Nam. Uh. But nothing that mess with your head as bad as this. 
So I've made it a priority for our strike teams to blow them up whenever they find one. No fucking way we're gonna just let these things turn Earth into their favorite vacation spot. Okay, the reason why I let that play is just get a little bit more information. It was just, just wasn't just about doing the actual <clears throat> contract or the you know objective, whatever. So the huge power nodes, and we've discussed this. The, the, there's the gaseous form of uh, Ethereum, and there's the crystals themselves. Uh, the crystals, those big ones, terraform the area. That's how the zombies can live. They're you know feeding up the stuff and HPTs and all the other stuff in there. Um, they need the Ethereum gas. They need Ethereum and so on and so forth. whatever so um that's that for the audio logs we have documents here uh funding allocation one memorandum for weaver from carver subject funding allocation weaver i'll cut right to it i'm concerned uh have you had a chance to review the director's latest directive on funding allocation because if you read between the lines it looks to me like priorities are shifting and not in the right direction I'm reaching out to you about this first just in case I'm overreacting, but also because it's me and you who uh, who could end up getting screwed here. We both signed on with Requiem for the same reason, to shut down these outbreaks and use whatever we find to stay ahead of the Soviets. And yes, Strauss and Gray have contributed some valuable things to our weapons development. But now, just when my people in CS are chomping at the bit to build more Ethereum-powered ordnance, the director wants to funnel more of our budget to the lab coats than to those on the front line. Check the numbers if you don't believe me. Look, we've taken a, on a hell of a challenge with Operation Threshold. That's one massive outbreak zone to explore and pacify. We both want to give your strike team a fighting chance. Can you have a word with the director about this? I know the other departments have their place in this fight, but they're supposed to be supporting us, not the other way around. At least that's how I see it. Now, <clears throat> a couple ways to look at this because we know now that Eddie is the director, right? So... If they're taking uh, funding away from the actual on the ground, boots on the ground uh, type stuff, it just keeps the actual fighters who, you know, at the end, as we saw, you know, we all get taken away. Strauss, Carver, Weaver, Dr. Gray, uh, in handcuffs at the end. So if you kind of keep that stuff small, like it's easier for Eddie to kind of conquer them, as it were. Um, but also there is real research to be done with the lab coats. There is, you know, the guys that are in charge of the people on the ground always want more, more money for the people on the ground. The people that are in charge of the lab stuff always want more money to go to the lab stuff. It's, you know, it just is what it is. I mean, there's nothing, you know, very secret or crazy going on there. Anyhow, <clears throat> memorandum for Dr. Gray from Dr. Strauss. Subject funding allocation. This is part two, or not part two, but you know what I mean. My dear Dr. Gray, we don't speak often enough, but I have always sensed we have more in common with each other than with the men of war we work with. So I hope you share my pleasant surprise that the director's latest funding allocation appears, uh, appears to place increased value on our work. This could not come at a better time as Operation Thresho Threshold presents us with our greatest opportunities yet to advance our respective scientific disciplines. Nevertheless, I would like to urge caution as we move forward. And by that, I mean caution in our interactions with our fellow department heads, Weaver and Carver. As the Americans are fond of saying, this is not my first rodeo. I've seen how military men react when they perceive that they're being shortchanged. <clears throat> now, uh, now more than ever... <clears throat> Sorry, guys. Now more than ever, you and I need to present a united front and make good use of this increased funding, while at the same time not alienating other departments. Promise them the moon if you must, but let them see us as partners rather than competitors. You should know what I, that I've already spoken about this with the director himself. Rest assured, we have his full support. While I'm certain Weaver, or especially Carver, will attempt to redress this uh, shift in priorities, I'm confident the director will stay the course. He is well aware with enough time and resources we can unravel all the mysteries of the Dark Aether from what we are encountering in the Ural Mountains. Exact same thing I just said for the previous uh, statement goes with that one. Berlin comment. Firebase Z, a memo from the Berlin station chief contain Meyer containing intercepted communications from Omega Group's Dr. Valentina. So this is again, uh, think of Mauro Toten, Valentina, also the daughter of um, Vogel uh, from Team Machina. Just, I mean, yeah, 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 from Team Machina. 
Anyhow, Memorandum for Gregory Weaver from Station Chief Berlin, Subject Omega Group Comment. Sir, I am writing to alert you that we recently intercepted communications between Dr. Alexandra Valentina uh, of the KGB's Omega Group and su a suspected operative here in West Berlin. We've done our best to track... <laughs> that threw me. Just keep... This stick drift, man, it just starts scrolling. It's just like, what's going on? Uh, sorry. We've done our best to track her movements and activities since she arrived in East Berlin last week. While we are still trying to determine the precise purpose of her visit, the contents of this intercept support our suspicion that Omega is setting up a major operation here in the U.S. occupied sector of the city. Transcript of intercept translated from German. Valentina, need an update on site. Unknown contact. Readings confirm membrane permeable. Has date been determined? Valentina... This is not up to me. Just keep your people ready to mobilize. Contact. Acknowledged. However, some starting to question if this is even possible. Valentina. Eliminate the doubters. No margin for error. Ground must be uh, prepared. Unknown contact. Understood. We'll make an example of them. Valentina. Good, but do so quietly. Do not lose element of surprise. We're currently working to identify Valentina's contact. We cannot match with any known Omega or KGB asset. I will keep you advised of our progress. Heinrich Meyer, Berlin Station Chief. Operation Threshold Authorization. <clears throat> From Outbreak. CIA Director Gregor, uh, CIA Director Casey Greenlights Requiem's operations in the Ural Mountains. From, excuse me, for, rather, Director of Requiem. From DCI Casey, subject Operation Threshold. Having consulted with POTUS and all appropriate NATSEC stakeholders, I have officially authorized implementation of Operation Threshold. You are hereby instructed to immediately mobilize all personnel and resources necessary to support extended covert ops in the Ural Mountains outbreak zone. Mission parameters remain as detailed in the proposal you submitted to me. As expected, the White House's main concern is the obvious one. Staging ongoing military, military operations in the heart of the Soviet Union risks triggering full-scale war. However, both NATO and the USSR are driven by a mutual need to keep these dimensional incursions secret from the public. Moscow has as much to lose as we do from a global panic. There are, uh, we are therefore confident the Soviets will keep our presence in the Ural Mountains under wraps, so, as, uh, so long as we operate within the perimeter they have established for their own covert ops. But there are limits to what each side will... That goes too far. This is a long one. Uh, what each side will tolerate, so keep engagements with Omega Group to a minimum. All four of your division leads are familiar with the planned array of objectives and the material assembled to carry them out. Nevertheless, as you further your Ethereum research and collect vi vitally needed data on the Dark Ether dimension, there are specific priorities I wish to reiterate. Major Carver should brief all Requiem operators on best practices when hunting elite class hostiles designated as high value targets. Likewise, make sure he prepares them for the teleportation effect associated with the Ethereum Crystal Power nodes. Dr. Strauss must ensure all Ethereum Harvester units are in working order with updated splashdown coordinates input uh, to their rocket guidance systems. Likewise, have him retest the Essence conversion modules. Dr. Gray should resubmit documentation that her Dark Ether specimen analyzes function as intended. If your operators are going to risk their lives defending them, they damn well better yield some useful data. Likewise, make sure she has enough live specimens for repeated tests of the Dark Ether re uh, recon rover. There, <coughs> That's the monkeys, by the way. There are still funds remaining in the monkey budget. Ooh, <laughs> should uh, more primates be required? Finally, Special Operations Officer Weaver should undertake a thorough assessment of strike team operators to make sure they're prepared to support all research ops and, if necessary, render assistance to any science personnel in the field. It goes without saying that Threshold will be Requiem's largest and most important operation to date, perhaps ever. The Ural Outbreak Zone represents our greatest single opportunity to surpass the Soviets in Ethereum weaponry and energy production. In short, this is where the Ethereum arms race will be won or lost. Operation Threshold could be the key victory, a key to victory over the USSR, not to mention the extra-dimensional forces arrayed against us. Apologies for the granular nature of my instructions, but too much is right. <coughs> too much is riding on this. I'm counting on you. Uh, I'm counting on you, Director. We all are. <coughs> Excuse me, William J. Casey, Director of Central Intelligence, and that was um, to uh, Rick Toffin, Eddie Rick Toffin. 
Domino effect. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> I, I forgot I have all the reading I have to do here. From DCI William J. Casey from, uh, excuse me, for DCI William J. Casey from Office of SIGINT Operations Subject Outbreak Zones regarding global threat originating from suspected Soviet operation near Morasco, Poland, 18 hours ago. In brief, it appears a Spetsnav, Spetsnaz covert ops team has somehow punched a hole in the fabric of space-time. This phenomenon is, to our knowledge, unprecedented. Our physics experts describe it as a breach in the quantum membrane separating our dimension from the, a parallel reality. The Morasco event remains localized. That is, of course, Demachina, by the way, guys. But it appears to have triggered a global ripple effect as we have detected several similar breaches around the world. The Morasco event will, was first detected by satellite component of our distant early warning network created to detect ICBM launches and or nuclear detonations. Massint recorded a unique ex ex electromagnetic signature at the Morasco site, followed by similar readings in Venezuela, Namibia, Vietnam, Azerbaijan, and Russia. Uh, Signint? Uh, shouldn't that be Signint? Not Signint? I don't know. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Intercepts from local authorities describe a fast acting plague that transforms victims into violent monsters. Monsters. Zombies. Infection does not follow traditional disease vectors. Instead, it appears dependent on proximity to, to the dimensional breach. We are currently designating these sites as outbreak zones. Details as follows. Russia, detected m nine minutes after Morasco event. The breach in the Ural Mountains is by far the largest recorded outbreak zone. Soviet response currently focuses on containment and suppression of information to present a, uh, prevent a national panic. Azerbaijan. Detected 12 minutes after the Morasco event, much smaller than the Urals event, though located near the capital city Baku, containment and suppression efforts were swift and successful. Namibia, detected 33 minutes after Morasco event in a remote section of the Namib desert. We have a team en route to assess the breach firsthand and anticipate useful data will be collected. Vietnam, detected 39 minutes after Morasco event in Tua Tien Hue, province sorry for the butchering of that the smallest breach so far is in some ways the most troubling dimensional membrane instability in this region uh, la, 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 suggests further breaches may occur local authorities are teaming with Soviet assets to contain the situation Venezuela detected one hour after Morasco event deep in the rainforest south of the Orinoco CIA science team is en route uh, further updates and recommended actions will follow as this is a developing situation. For now, we strongly urge the formation of a dedicated task force to suppress and contain hostile forces and potential uh, spread of all outbreak zones, regardless of location. David Halperin, Director, Office of SIGINT Operations. <clears throat> Those are all the outbreak zones that happened after Demachina. We covered this basically yesterday in different um, intel, so nothing particularly new there. That's just the, the uh, blueprint for the recon rover and the disruptor satellite blueprint. Covered that. I mean, we've seen that all that stuff before. We need to go over that. Okay, so you guys don't have to listen to me anymore. Back to the radio transmissions. We have, this is Maya, Berlin Station Chief. Urgent question. Did you get the memorandum I submitted on Saturday? If so, why is there still no response? Forgive me, but I do not think anyone at Langley grasps the seriousness of the situation. Dr. Valentina is here, in Berlin. The city is divided. East and West are nose to nose here. If she does something drastic, the consequences could go global in the worst possible way. Just please advise how best to proceed. Personally, I'd like a Requiem strike team on route here right now, but I leave that decision to you. Again, this is about Valentina being in Berlin, and then which leads to Mauer or Toten. We are aware of this. Thing. Okay, so this is all like predictive stuff. But what's little clues about what's coming up next? For this, that was from Firebase C. This is from Outbreak. Weaver readies the team for the challenge that awaits in the Herald Mountains. Strike team, I want to thank you on behalf of everyone here for what you accomplished in Vietnam. The intel you recovered from Omega Group is already paying off in new technology and weapons. This is especially important as we launch operations in the Ural Mountains. 
The AO you've entered is richer in Ethereum than anywhere else on the planet. But Omega is already hard at work there. Never forget, we are in a race against time to harness the Dark Ether before they do. The winner of this Ethereum arms race may well be decided by your actions here. So, we can't fuck this up. Weaver out. Pretty self-explanatory. Just want to be clear on what's expected from you. Every department of Requiem has a stake in this. Energy research, unnatural sciences, security and containment. They all have special equipment in the field that we need you to test. Strauss, Gray, and Carver will give you the details at the appropriate time, and I expect you to follow their instructions to the letter. Remember, these experiments and operations aren't busy work. They're important. They're how we eventually win. Again, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, final one uh, from Outbreak Under Observation. Weaver gives the team an update on Maxis. Some of you have asked repeatedly <clears throat> about Agent Maxis. I get it. You risked your life to save her, then weeks went by with no word on her condition. I get it. Well, I'm finally authorized to let you know she's recovering. At least, physically. She's been under observation in an isolation ward. Getting the best care the agency can provide. Mm. But... She went through things in the dark ether that would have broken most people. It's a miracle she survived. She's not infected. She's on the mend. And everything you went through to bring her back... Absolutely worth it. Okay, so that's at least partly true. Um, we... Will, well, we'll get... We're gonna get it in other intel coming up here so no need to really go over it now but um the director who she didn't know who it was at the time we know it's eddie now uh was really pushing her um threatened to kill her dog threatened to kill dr gray unless sam did some really bad stuff like you know you with her mind try to kill somebody in the next room which she was able to do um so uh, anyway that's just kind of what's going on here at first she's just recovering and seems like everything's okay and then we'll get you know we'll see eventually how that turns out artifacts these are just um th you know from doing the ch uh, the uh, the objectives in in outbreak so nothing particularly special here you guys know what all that stuff is okay so let's go to omega we'll start these audio logs here Half of the reason this is from Firebase Z, Kukle meets with Valentina for a secret transaction. Again, Kukle is the guy that built the Ray K uh, Wonder Weapon, and Valentina is, of course, um, Angelica uh, Vogel. So, uh, we see her in uh, Mauder Toten. She's the big bad in that one, and then she is also the daughter of Ulrich Vogel, who we know from D Machine. Is this everything? Surely there is more. I assure you, Dr. Valentina, this is everything. Research on membrane permutations? What about the particle distortion modules? Everything you need on targeted dimensional breaching is there. What leech now? Have it delivered to this address. You're not taking it with you? Is there a problem with my order? No, 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 no. I just thought... Thinking is a dangerous thing. Is it not, comrade? Have it delivered to the address. Make sure you are not discovered by Peck. <laughs> Believe me, he is half of the reason I am doing this. And other half. Why, for the good of the motherland, of course. Of course. For the motherland. <clears throat> Membrane permutation. Anyway, that's a little conversation between the two of them. Uh, from Outbreak, Ghost Stories, newly in command of Omega Group, Kravchenko, who is the guy that, you know, that he's kind of like, well, you guys remember at the end of Firebase Z, he's the one that takes Peck's eye, uh, and he's also from previous Modern Warfare games. Um, Kravchenko reflects on the bizarre unit he has inherited. Kravchenko, 21st of April, 1983. Three weeks since I accepted command of Spets Group Omega. And I'm beginning to wonder if Comrade Andropov was out of his mind when he created this book show. My first order of business was a thorough review of Omega Group activities since their formation in 75. 
What a fucking joke. The study of psychotronic phenomena. What does that even mean? Biocommunication, bioenergetics, bioinformation. Words invented by paper pushers to make ghost stories sound real. I read hundreds of their bullshit reports and found nothing useful. So, I reassigned the authors to dig bio latrines. But if, if Andropov was not out of his mind, if he saw some genuine operational value in any of this nonsense, I will give this one more month, and then I will pull the plug. <coughs> so he's just, um, Kravchenko is just skeptical of the, any of this stuff actually being real. He just thinks it's all ghost stories and blah, blah, blah. Uh, something I can use from Outbreak. Kravchenko meets with Valentina to discuss his expectations of her proposed mission to Project N Station. 15th of July, 1983. Comrade Valentina, I am recording this meeting for my records. Of course, Colonel. I take it you have viewed the Project N Station footage. Muta, where did you find this film? Gathering dust in a restricted portion of Lubyanka sub-basement record storage. Someone went to great lengths to bury the incident back in 45. But times have changed since then. Indeed. That cowboy actor and his strategic defense initiative That's have upset the stalemate about. between us and the West. I asked for something to tip the scales back in our favor. You think this is it? There is only one way to find out. Allow me to reactivate the end station cyclotron. If I can harness their access to another dimension, we can give the motherland a tactical advantage the Americans can only dream of. And if you cannot harness it? Then bury the bunker in concrete and declare the place off limits. And maybe leave flowers every year to remember my sacrifice. I don't care about sacrifice. Only results. I will authorize your mission. But you had better bring back something I can use. Understood, Colonel. Understood. So again, this is from the past, and then we know what happened with the machine about the outbreaks. We've just covered it in some previous intel here, so um, we know what happened. There. Kravchenko, 8th of July, 1984. And Dr. William Peck, lead research. Shut up, you little worm. You're lucky to be alive. Sorry, sir. I. Silence. This is not a dialogue. You are here to receive your orders. There is a plane standing by to take you to the Ural Mountains outbreak zone. You will oversee a special operation there involving a particularly rich deposit of Ethereum crystals. My people will brief you once you are airborne. You won't regret this, sir. <laughs> and, uh, please let Gorev know I'm off the hook. I'm worried he still wants to kill me. Gorev will be there with you, shadowing your every step. Because you are not off the hook, Dr. Beck. Do not fail me ever again. Okay, um, that's like that's just stuff from the Urals. It's outbreak, we know. Um, Kravchenko puts Gorev in charge of plugging a leak. This is from Outbreak as well. <clears throat> Gorev, before you depart for the Urals, I need a word with you. New instructions, Colonel? No. It is the same matter that has vexed me ever since Requiem's arrival at End Station. Whoever leaked Omega Intelligence to them remains unidentified. If they did not die at Outpost 25, the traitor may still be among us. I am working on it night and day, sir. My apologies that it has taken this long. We could have found out the informant's name back in Vietnam. But that idiot American tossed the only person who knew into the dark ether. What kind of genius throws away his trump card? Peck may be book smart, but he has no common sense, and even less self-control. But I swear to you, Colonel, 
the informant will be exposed. The only question is if I will be able to bring them in alive. If I find myself left with no options... Do what you must, Gorif. They deserve to die slowly. As long as the leak is plugged, I will be satisfied. Eduardo, thank you for subscribing. And they're just talking about trying to find out who the mole is and peck through Maxis into the Dark Ether so they couldn't figure it. She's the only one that knew who it was. Um, they're talking about uh, Ravenoff, but, you know, they, they don't know they're talking about Ravenoff, but that's who they are. He, you know, he's the mole, so. <clears throat> in the wild, from the outbreak, Peck records his first impressions of a key discovery in the Ural Mountains. William Peck, personal notes. Arrived in the Ural Mountain outbreak zone three days ago. It was a little hard to believe the briefing I was given on the flight here. But now that I see it for myself, to paraphrase Archimedes, holy shit, this is even better than I hoped for. The breach opening right on top of an installation like this may have given me the key to making an inversion warhead actually work. <laughs> I'm a fucking genius. I already knew of the catalyzing effect Ethereum has on plutonium. That was how I got my portal chamber to work at Outpost 25. But the readings I'm getting from the crystals here... We've never seen Ethereum this pure in the wild, so to speak. You, up there! Be careful! That's not something you want to bang too hard. Understand? <laughs> yeah, they understand. These boys look scared out of their wits. Just wait till they hear the next item on my shopping list. <laughs> We're gonna need some special helpers to make this work. Rounding them up will not be easy. <laughs> so Archimedes, of course, made the death ray. Well, allegedly a death ray way back when. Uh, <laughs> a very flip term from a long time ago. Um, <clears throat> so he's talking about... What will come to be, you know, the Legion boss fight with the warheads there and everything in... I always confuse the two. Duga or Ruka? I don't remember which. I think Ruka? I don't know. One of the maps from um, the Outbreak Legion boss fight. You guys remember the, the one. That's where he is, as we were talking about. And just a refresher from yesterday. Anytime you hear Outpost 25, that is Firebase Z. Okay. Proposed targets from Outbreak. Valentina laments the Kremlin's choice of targets for Operatia in Versailles. I just returned from the Kremlin, where I presented the list of proposed targets for Operatia Inversia to the General Secretary and select the members of the Committee for State Security. The results were... mixed. I should be pleased that the overall plan was so well received. Perhaps they realized that without bold action the Soviet Union could collapse within a decade. And Inversia is nothing if not bold. It would be a death blow to the West. Which may account for the committee's preference of two particular targets. But I pushed hard for Berlin. It would have afforded me further opportunities to complete my preparations there. The colonel did question my fixation on Berlin, but I just told him I hate the Germans. That is always enough of an excuse for veterans of the great patriotic war like Kravchenko. The Great Patriotic War, meaning World War II, I'm assuming. Um, <clears throat> Valentina, again, she desperately wants to get to Berlin. She's got her whole plan that we end up doing, you know, going through in Mauer der Toten. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Lightning bugs from Outbreak. Peck discusses uh, the capture of some key components for his latest experiment. William Peck, supplemental notes. Well, it took a week and cost the lives of some brave young men, but we finally did it. We caught four of those floaty blue bastards alive. <laughs> those are the, uh, okay, sure. By we, I mean the highly trained operators in Omega. The group. electric guys. I'm not called? exactly the field ops type. But they could never have locked down those lightning bugs without the gear I built for them. I mean, have you ever tried to cage something that can teleport? Now, one big help in this whole process is how attracted the blue guys are to the crystals. The big ones, the atmosphere converters. The purer the crystal, the more irresistible. 
I think that was the first tip-off that I could co-opt the way they metabolize Ethereum for my own purposes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Sparky, I know it hurts, but you gotta take one for the team. We all serve a greater good now. And I promise, if Operatia Inversia stays on schedule, you won't be suffering for long. I don't remember what they were called. What were those things called? That mini boss. <clears throat> I, I, I don't know why I can't remember the name of it. <clears throat> Alright, New Frontiers, progress report, Ural Mountains, Dimensional Breach. Colonel, I have completed my latest review of Omega Group operations in the Ural Mountains, Breach AO. Uh, overall conclusion is that our efforts are proceeding on schedule and yielding tangible results. If anything, progress has accelerated since the arrival of Dr. Peck. It appears your personal reprimand had the desired result. I've never seen him more motivated to meet the goals we have set for his team. We still face a highly dangerous and unpredictable work environment, but if we're to deliver a decisive strategic advantage over the Americans and NATO, the answers will be found here. Ethereum collection <coughs> continues around the clock and... Sorry. My mic keeps dropping in and out and I can't hear. It's not my mic, it's the cord. Anyway. <coughs> Ethereum collection continues around the clock. This is by far the richest source of Ethereum crystals in the world, with new deposits forming every day. In fact, the infestation is so great we don't even have to send collect, uh, collection teams to the other side. I've taken steps to obscure the true levels of our growing stockpile. If there's a leak in Omega, the last thing we want is Requiem discovering the true magnitude of what we have here. If there's any upside to the dangers we face from Dark Aether hostiles, it's the opportunity for weapons testing. We've even recovered weaponry from some of the hostels unique to this location. In conclusion, the Ural Mountains breach remains our most important area of operations. Should Requiem continue their efforts to match our Ethereum research, then let this be our battleground for the fate of the motherland. Gorev, Spetsgruppa Omega. Omega staffing report. <coughs> Uh, regarding Omega leadership appointments, author Colonel Lev Kravchenko. Nine days ago, the chairman of the Committee for State Security tasked me with revitalizing Spetsgruppa Omega. Today, after consultation with comrades Andropov and Cheberkov, I am prepared to name key personnel to lead Omega Group's military and scientific operations. My right-hand man, Gorev, will serve as tactical operations lead during active measures, ensuring our unit's performance is not just up to Spetsnaz standards, but up to my standards. Omega's original focus on superstitions and old wives' tales made these operators soft. Gorov will burn all softness out of them. Assisting them, <clears throat> assisting him will be Captain Sergei Ravanov, our guy. He's the mole that they still don't know about, uh, whose sterling service record should calm the fears of any apparitchik uh, with misgivings about Comrade Gorev. As for Omega's standard uh, stated mission to identify. <coughs> Study and weaponize so-called exoscientific phenomena. I have chosen trusted experts to assess the validity and practicality of such a focus. If they say we can realistically deliver a counterpunch to Reagan's strategic defense initiative, so be it. If not, I will request that this unit be liquidated and the men reassigned. Dr. Al Alexandria, Ex Alexandra Valentina has already assumed leadership of our psychotronic phenomena research. See, my throat is so dry. I should <clears throat> bring hot tea to do this next time. Jeepers. Oh, there's not going to be a next time, by the way, I don't think. Because obviously you guys don't want, like are not interested in going over this stuff. And I get it. It's pretty boring. Like We're just going over intel. Uh, I understand. But um, I think this is probably going to be the last one because there's like nobody tuning in. So if you're watching this later as a VOD, hi. You're the only one that's watching this. Uh, but we're going to finish up. Uh, we'll finish up season two anyway. Uh, for tonight, but I think we're going to stop. Uh, Dr. Alexandra Valentina has already assumed leadership of our psychotronic re uh, phenomena research, the study of extrasensory perception, telekinesis, pyrokinesis, and so on. For the last eight years, Omega Group failed to verify the existence of such abilities, much less harness them. In addition to having a background in hard science, Comrade Valent Valentina is a straight talker and a, a Soviet's Soviet. If Omega is a waste of resources, she will give me the unvarnished truth. <clears throat> Finally, Dr. Peck 
Dr. William Peck from America's we uh, Weapon Research Organization, DARPA, will serve as exoscientific phenomena research lead. Peck will develop mi military applications for Ethereum. Comrade Chebrikov tells me there was some pushback of, to this choice. After all, if Peck betrayed his own country, why wouldn't he sell us out as well? Rest assured, I have contingencies in place if Peck ever thinks of betraying me. I have issued a general order to scour all records since the creation of Omega Group in 1975. Surely something usable, something uh, of worth, must have been found in all of that time. Colonel Le Lev Kravchenko, Commanding Officer, Omega Group. It is kind of funny because um, I thought there was going to be more with Peck's story. You know, we were talking yesterday about Strauss, and, you know, he is German. He was uh, doing scientific, oper uh, you know, um, what do you call it? Like, uh, searching for scientific discoveries during World War II with the German ends, you know, the N-A-Z-I's. It's a bad word to say on YouTube. They, they just flag your stuff and just like, no, 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 I can't talk about that stuff. So that's why I'm saying German ends. Um, so he was suspicious basically from the get-go, and he said as much, you know, in, in the intel that we went over yesterday. He was just like, you know, I was not one of those. I was just a scientist. I was doing science. I'm sciencing the hell out of science. Um, that's what I was interested in. Not in their political or military, you know, type of stuff that they were involved in. And <clears throat> it just seemed like it was going to eventually lead up to he was going to betray us somehow. He was going to be behind something. And he never was. Um, this is not spoilers. We've gone through Cold War. If you've not played Cold War, that's not my fault at this point. It's been out for four years. Play the goddamn game. Um, and then with Peck, like, was he going to flip? Was he going to, you know, he already flipped on us, but was he going to flip on the Russians as well? Was he a double agent? Was he a spy, our spy uh, over there? Um, and no, he stayed on that side. I mean, he didn't like those guys. Those guys didn't like him, it seems. The whole way through. I mean, Kravchenko takes his eye out at, at the end of Firebase Z. Everybody that we talk to that we see in this stuff, nobody likes him. Um, but he never, I mean, he was just going after what he was going after. And then in Firebase Z, you know, there's the whole part with him. We, you have to go, you know, part of the Easter egg, a couple of parts of the Easter egg. You have to go talk to Peck down in his room. And he's going on and on about how, you know, his wife Martha and, um, Blah, blah, blah. And I thought they were going to uh, add something to that story with something happened with Martha that made him flip. But I don't really remember there being anything like particular or big, like something that really happened other than he kind of lost the love of his life. And then he just said, screw it. I'm going to be a, a traitor. Like, I don't know. It was a little bit. I thought there would be more to it. But <clears throat> it's odd for his zombies to give us. To say, hey, here's this thing, and then, or this person, and then for them to be just that person or just that thing, and there's no kind of um, twist to it, really. And with Strauss and Peck, uh, that's basically what we got. Although I think that something might change with Peck uh, leading into the next game, at the very start of the next game. So I guess I will give you my theory again at the end of this, since I don't think we're going to do this again. It, again, there's just no. Nobody's watching, so I don't want to, like, waste my own time and voice. Um, and I don't want to waste your time either. Um, if you, like, you're not wasting time, you're not watching it. So whatever. Uh, but I'll give you my, what I think will happen, I guess, again, at the end of this Season two Intel. So at the end of this video. Um, <clears throat> regarding Omega Group Records. Uh, records review from Dr. Alexandra Valentina. Summary, Omega's central database archives confirm the main operational focus was to gain a scientific understanding of psychotronic abilities like biocommunications and bioenergetics, then instill those abilities in our covert operators. Obviously, being able to read minds of, or dominate the wills of others would have great utility in espionage and covert operations. Though they never determined a scientific cause for extrasensory abilities, they did conscript a handful of Russian nationals with genuine talents and train them as intelligence assets. Alas, their gifts were impossible to reproduce, and all such assets were either killed in action or suffered psychological breakdowns that rendered them useless for continued service. Still, the work showed promise. 10 April 1976. 
A suicide bomber attempting to enter the Soviet embassy in Ho Chi Minh City was sensed by an Omega Group asset on site. The terrorist was stopped and detonated at the gate, uh, saving countless lives in the compound. <clears throat> 29 June 1976, East Germany hosted a multilateral conference for European communist <laughs> parties. A mind-reading Omega asset learned several representatives from Soviet satellite states were uniting to extract concessions from the Kremlin. Omega units quietly rounded up the diplomats' families in their homes, uh, home countries, ending the insurrection before it started. That's kind of I don't know, like mind crimes, right? You, the, you think you're going to, we say you're going to commit the crime, and then we stop you from committing the, the crime before it happens. So, how do you know it's ever going to happen? Uh, <clears throat> 7 April 1978, following a remotely placed suggestion by an Omega biocommunications asset at our embassy in Washington, U.S. President Carter suspended production of their neutron bomb. Dude, my voice is going. <clears throat> 28 April 1978, a clairvoyant Omega asset helped the People's Democratic Party of Afghanistan assassinate the Afghan president. The asset experienced a mental breakdown and had to be liquidated as she attempted to defect at the British consulate consulate in Kabul. There were also indications in the records of Omega involvement in several high-profile assassinations uh, ops in March, May, and October of 1981. All assets involved were liquidated after Comrade Brezhnev's untim untimely death in 1982. My review has so far been limited to the central database on the KGB mainframe. Other records deemed too sensitive for the party leadership were sent for storage elsewhere. I'm currently piecing together with a chain of custody on some of those items. Dr. Alexandra Valentina, Psychotronic Phenomena Research Lead Omega Group. So I don't think any of that is actual evidence. Other than the first one, like, I mean, uh, a suicide bomber was... Um, was sensed and then stopped at the gate. But, I mean, I don't know if they know that that's necessarily... Anyway, everything else is like, well, this was going to happen, and we stopped it before it happened. Well, how do you know it was going to happen? So you don't know that they're, like, it's a real kind of a thing. Anyhow, uh, radio transmissions, let's go. Dr. Peck, do not speak. I have no stomach for excuses. Just listen. Outpost 25 has fallen. Where is failed me. Ever meet anyone else who failed me? And yet, they are all dead. However, we are receiving your research. That is the only reason I wouldn't overlook your transgression. But you will make it up to me. The Americans and their Requiem group pose a threat to our operations. You get one more chance to keep us ahead of them. One. And you will deliver. Forget about Requiem. Gorya will handle them. And their more personally. You will focus on your work. Give me something to show Moscow we are not wasting the resources. Kravchenko out. Okay, again, pretty self-explanatory. This is from Outbreak. That was from Friday, basically. Um, <clears throat> up to speed. Gorev warns, warns Peck not to squander his second chance. Sorry to pack. Hello, my American friend. I trust you find Mother Russia more hospitable than the jungles of Vietnam. Hospitable? I've gone from sweating my ass off to freezing my nuts off, so it was a rhetorical question. I do not really care about your comfort. Only that you do not squander the second chance we have very generously given you. I... yes, uh, of course. But believe me, got a lot to work with here. Just keep Kravchenko informed of your progress. You may be top scientist, but it is you under microscope now. Fail him again, and you will be mining Ethereum crystals while Dr. Valentina takes your place. I think she would very much enjoy this. With all due respect, Valentina can't even begin to understand the Dark Ether like I do. See, that is point. No more secrets.
secrets. No more hoarding information, so you are only one with answers. Share what you know. Get everyone uh, up to speed, as you like to say. Is your best move if you want to be other eye. I will. I will do my best. Oh, I know you will. Because if there is one thing you Americans love, it is a comeback story. This is your chance to make your friend Gorev proud. And I know you do want to make me proud. <clears throat> you get it. <clears throat> I forgot about Gorev though, like until yesterday going back over this stuff, like I completely forgot about Gorev. Uh, this is from Outbreak. Gorev tells Peck there is an informant in Omega Group, and they are to be taken alive. Hello, Peck. Remember how you allowed spy to infiltrate your ranks at Outpost 25? Remember how this informant compromised our valuable research lead over Americans? Look, I know I screwed up, but the mole's dead now, right? I mean, I'm the sole survivor from that whole Vietnam fiasco. Yes, go. Such a colorful word. Almost sounds like fun. You know what is not fun? That we still have massive fucking intelligence leak thanks to your not dead mole whom Krychenko once taken alive. Alive, huh? <laughs> he must have plans for the poor schmuck. You will be schmuck if we do not figure out who it is. So, put Big Brain to work, and contact me immediately if you identify the son of a bitch. Am I clear? Crystal. Okay, they still never don't know, not never, but they still <coughs> don't know. That's Ravenoff. <coughs> Outbreak. Gorev informs Peck that Requiem is now operating in the Ural Mountains in Outbreak Zone. Peck, Gorev here. Bad news, little man. My scouts confirmed that Requiem is now conducting operations in the Uro Mountains Breach Zone. That... How is that even possible? They are desperate. But we cannot risk them finding out about your current project. Are you saying I should lay low somewhere? <laughs> so brave. No, Peck. Operatia Inversia is to remain your priority. The colonel already mentioned it to Kremlin. Do not make him look bad. Just have your people keep their eyes open. Report any signings of Requiem, but do not engage. Leave that to Spetsnaz. We live for this shit. So the good guys basically, uh, Requiem, were going to the Ural Mountains as well, and you know, the, um, but he's telling them to keep going with Operatia and Versia. The Legion boss fight. <clears throat> Couple of artifacts. <clears throat> uh, this is what he plucked his eye out with. And that's just an Omega Group patch. Nothing particularly special there. <clears throat> so this is um, Maxis Intel now. This is from Firebase Z. Ravenov warns of expanded Omega Group activities in Russia's Euro map. It is not fun being on the run, but you know that better than anyone. I have news. Bad news. Omega's operations are expanding rapidly, in the way we feared most. We have noticed an uptick in activity deep in the Ural Mountains. More people coming in every day. There's talk of a special operation. As I said, Bad news. Operatia Inversia, Inversia, you know, again. Outbreak, Carver interviews Maxis and the Isolation Ward. Good evening, Agent Maxis. I am Major Carver. I hope you're recovering from your ordeal. Major. Would that make you Requiem's highest ranking military representative? This is after she was rescued from <laughs> the Dark Please call me Fire back. Base. My friends do. Now, I'm gonna get down to brass tacks. 
We are fighting a war that we both know we're losing. I was hoping your experiences could shed some light on just how far the enemy has gotten ahead of us. Which enemy? Are you talking about Omega? Or the others? In the when dark you say others, I'm assuming you mean hostile elements from within the dark <coughs> ether itself. <coughs> Are they... mobilizing? Are their forces strategizing an assault on our world? What kind of technology do they possess? Is there some kind of hierarchy we should be aware of? Well, Mac, to answer your questions in order, Yes, yes, yes. I'm not sure, probably. But I'd be lying if I said I understood it. The whole experience of being trapped there was confusing. With all due respect, Agent Maxis, as a former agent of the BND, there have doubtless been times in your career, your life, where lying and misleading those around you was very much essential. Do you think I'm lying to you, Major Carver? No. But I am concerned about the content of some transmissions you sent while you were in the Dark Aether. Some of them seem to imply that you yourself might have caused the outbreak at Outpost 25. I don't know how that would be possible. Do you? In recent months, we've seen a lot of things we never thought possible. So, if any details do come back to you, I trust you will let us know. Of course. No. If you don't mind, I would like to get some sleep. Fairly self-explanatory. Nothing particularly crazy there. She was in the dark either. We pulled her out. You know, the stuff that she said when she was in there. Gone a little bit kind of cuckoo. We know she didn't start what happened if I raised Eve. That was uh, Peck. Opened up... <coughs> the the breach whatever um anyhow my reputation precedes me outbreak strauss visits maxis and his and voices his concerns well isn't this nice I thought you might appreciate hearing a familiar voice. We have a lot in common, after all. I'm not sure that we do. We're both Germans, but I think the similarity ends there. Oh dear, I'm sorry. Are you ashamed of your nationality for some reason? Not ashamed, not at all. But our nationality isn't what defines us. True. Very true. What do you want, Dr. Strauss? <sighs> My reputation precedes me. I'm flattered. Humbled, even. Well, I'm not sure you've ever been humbled, Strauss. In fact, I'm not even sure you're that much different from Peck. My. Such anger. You don't like him, do you? I can't say that I'm surprised. I mean, he did treat you very badly. I don't like repeating myself, but again I have to ask, what do you want? Requiem are very interested in the gaps in your memory regarding the events at Outpost 25, particularly its destruction and the question of your role in it. I was angry and confused. But that doesn't mean I could somehow unleash all the forces of the Dark Aether upon Omega. Well, I was thinking your anger was perhaps directed more at Peck. I would understand the desire for revenge you really think I had the power to do that, Strauss? I'm more concerned about the possibility of you doing it again. Don't worry. I'm not a danger to you. Or anyone else. What about yourself? Don't you have other things to do, Strauss? 
Again, this is just one of those things that made Strauss seem <clears throat> kind of sus uh, suspicious, but in the end, I mean, well, at least we got nothing from it during the game. Things can always change going forward, but I mean, nothing really from during the game. By the end of it, where you're like, oh, yeah, see? I mean, he just was who he said he was. <clears throat> Hi, Sam. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Gray. I was wondering if you felt well enough for a bit of a chat? Sure, Liz. Why not? I don't really like being called Liz. That was my mum's name. I prefer Elizabeth, if that's okay. Oh, wait, I just realised. Do you prefer Samantha? Samantha, Sam, Maxis. Doesn't really matter to me. What do you want, Dr. Gray? I just wanted to ask you some questions. Truth is, we're all a little bit surprised how well you're doing after your time in... Well, you know. You don't really know how well I'm doing or how long I was there, do you? That was one of the things I wanted to talk about. We do know that time moves differently there. Slower or faster, not sure. Suppose it's all relative, really. I was there a long time. A very long time. So long I thought I'd never get out. I'm sorry. I really am. But that's what's so unusual. Normally when people come back, they're more damaged. Physically and emotionally. What makes you think I'm not damaged? The only thing we've actually been able to detect is the change in your eyes. I've never seen anything like it. They're almost iridescent. The Do things look different to you? I see things differently, if that's what you mean. Sometimes the light hurts my eyes. Especially if I'm tired. Um, are you tired now? Would you mind switching the lights off on your way out? <clears throat> So, that one, um, you're talking about how much he was affected by the Dark Aether or not affected, you know, kind of depends. But also the amount of time that goes by while you're there, how different it is. I'm looking for a picture right now. And also her eyes changed her eyes right now. Purple. Well, I don't think they're always like that though. They can be, but they're not always. Did I put it in the Firebase the slot folder? Not slot. Oh man, there's some old stuff. Oh, this is some stuff I was talking about yesterday. MNR Fire Firebase Z. I was telling you, well, it doesn't matter. Nobody's, again, nobody's paying attention, so I'm just going to skip that. Okay, it doesn't matter. Um, I, I'm not going to go to the Firebase. I wonder if I even still have them. I might have taken them off. Stuff that I think I had saved to my desk here, and if I save it to my desktop, I know it's gone. Anyways, you guys remember Sam with the purple eyes, I'm sure, or I hope you do anyway. Um, I'm not seeing it, so I'm just gonna cancel this. Guess I'm looking for it. Uh, yeah, cause I, don't see it. I was just gonna sit, you know, show you again, like compare to that to what we uh, get uh, get from Dr. Jansen at the end of the, the latest cutscene. So act... Well, no, 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 no. At the end of act... Three or four? What does she get it at the end? Of? It's kind of hard to keep track of those stupid... Because the acts didn't... We got one more mission. At the end of act four mission, I think it was. Um, when, you know, she goes in... That's a really cool cutscene when she goes in, you know, the, the lights go red and there are zombies coming after her in the hallway and then she looks like she slices Kravchenko's throat, but it's actually uh, a Ravenov's throat, but, um, you know, it's all in her head and her eyes glow purple. Anyway. Weaver. Hello, Sam. You look serious. 
My colleagues tell me you've not exactly been cooperative or forthcoming. Instead, you've been evasive, obtuse even. Ain't that just like me? This isn't a joke, Sam. I'm worried about you. We all are. After what I've been through, do you honestly think I'm joking? Sam. I thought I'd died and gone to hell. I thought everything and everyone I ever knew was gone forever. You've been to hell before, though, Sam. We both have. I was never going to leave you there to die. Like you did the boy. That's not fair, Sam. That was a different situation. We both did all we could. But not enough. He's still dead, isn't he? I can see you're agitated. So I'm gonna let you get some rest. I hope you feel better soon. I don't want to upset you. Why? Are you worried I'll destroy everything like you think I did at Outpost 25? Weaver! <clears throat> the fire in the house. Was that Eddie's kid? Eddie's son? We still don't know. We think that it probably is, but we still don't know. Uh, Strauss's Maxis status report. Excuse me. <laughs> Memorandum for Carver, Gray, and Strauss. Oscar Strauss. Elizabeth Gray. Major. Okay. Matt Carver. <coughs> From Gregory Weaver regarding uh, Agent Maxis. I know you all have your hands full right now. Uh, sifting through the intel recovered from Operation Lost Property in Vietnam. But you have each inquired separately about the welfare and whereabouts of former BND agent Samantha Maxis, so I want to share our initial assessment of her condition. Immediately following her extraction from the Dark Ether, Agent Maxis was evacuated by our strike team, placed under medical supervision, and transported directly to Requiem headquarters. Preliminary physical and psychiatric evaluation evaluations were performed en route. She was found to be in surprisingly good physical condition considering her ordeal in the other dimension. We estimate she spent roughly 48 hours there. Agent Maxis claims she was missing for many months. Uh, physio yeah, physiological and metabolic data support her claim, but further details are slow in coming due to post-traumatic stress issues and apparent gaps in her memory. We will continue to monitor for indications of brain damage. I ordered her confined to the quarantine suite where she will remain until further notice. Though she was operating in an unsanctioned capacity, she is not to be considered a prisoner. However, we need to know what Max has learned about the other side, and I will secure her cooperation personally. For the time being, only myself, the director, and Requiem medical staff will have access to Max's as we continue running tests on her. All data and findings will be shared with you as I deem appropriate. I will permit you to interview uh, interview her when conditions allow. Until then, focus your efforts on the intel from Omega 20, Outpost 25 and its implications on future ops. Weaver. Max's diary entry. Sometimes I find it hard to sleep, even though I look forward to it. When I dream, I see faces. Faces of people I care about and faces of people that don't care for me. Sometimes it's hard to distinguish between the two. But one face stands out from all others. The face of a child. A boy. He is lost. Damaged. I want to help him, but somehow I feel that he is dangerous. Dreams are, unre are unreliable witnesses. As to am I. Sometimes I find it hard to sleep. Uh... Is she thinking of Eddie here? Um, probably. But who knows. Radio transmissions again from Maxis. I tried to write it down. But the words still escape me. I see what I have written, but I barely recognize it. My name is Maxis. Samantha Maxis. This I know. I was on a mission. I am still on a mission. Rob enough. Weaver. I have written these names over and over. They must be important. But not as important as End Station. <laughs> What a tangled web. I know I seek Requiem. Solace. Peace. I pray that they are the same thing. 
Now, I believe this is from when she was in the dark ether and making these radio transmissions, so... I don't know how or why, but I am remembering. I was angry before. And I... I am so sorry. That wasn't me. If it was, it... It really wasn't who I wanted to be. I made a promise. A promise I couldn't keep. I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. I wish I could have kept you safe. I didn't. Maybe that anger made me do things. Things I wish I hadn't done. I may regret some. But others, others I meant to do. Tech, 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 tech. He deserves whatever damnation I have brought upon him. I hope he burns in a hell worse than mine. Okay. Well, it's good to be part of a team, right? <clears throat> If I'm honest, I felt like a bit of a lab rat lately. I've been poked, prodded, questioned even. Interrogated. It's almost like they don't trust... me. I'm starting to understand how they feel. I'm not sure if I can trust them anymore. Even Weaver. This is definitely part of when she was at the, you know, when they're recovering at the hospital and everybody keeps going to talk to her. And uh, that's why it's like, you know, poked, prodded, questioned, even interrogated, you know, like. She's very suspicious of everybody. Everybody, you know, honestly, they're trying to get info from her. Whatever. So, after an extended debriefing with Requiem senior staff, they don't want to clear me for field ops. Carver, Strauss, Gray, Weaver. They needed a unanimous vote to authorize my return to active duty. Three out of four isn't bad, but it's not enough. Anyway, Ravanov, he helped you, right? He helped me. He has conviction and the courage to stand up for his beliefs. <clears throat> He's doing what's right. He's a good man. I hope you've come to trust him like I have. I think he could be key to overturning Omega, because there has to be a key to making all this stop. I just had a little bit of a nightmare kind of a thought. So if you guys remember, like, how you get all of these, uh, this intel was, I mean, one, you had to play the game a ton to get all of it. But two, a lot of it was, in the Outbreak maps, is literally just scouring those maps, regardless of how big they were looking on the ground for things literally looking on the ground or uh, you know on the railway uh, lines um behind we're everywhere just everywhere looking for stuff plus anytime you killed an hvt or a mini boss basically they could drop stuff um if they're going to do intel the same i mean then there's also like the radios the radios the good thing about the radios and uh well the radios at least were they were in a specific location you know there were uh, multiple ones but they were uh, like uh, I i'm trying to think of a, a specific um uh, instance but like on zoo right like you knew it was always in I'm, I'm just making this up but it was like always in the monkey house is the radio um, and then always at the front gate, there was a radio there as well. And then always at the house up on the, you know, kind of whatever side, you know, the, where those houses are, the little circle, um, is a radio. And you could check, you know, one per game. So, like, you knew where to go, but, like, the other stuff that you had to pick up, um, you know, like artifacts and all that kind of stuff. And again, with the, the HVTs and things, like, you literally had to just look on the ground all over the place and if they're, they're going to do that on a war zone map you know if again if we believe it's verdansk that's coming back like that's a big freaking map think of all the places you could go in all the apartments all those buildings the hospital just think of all the places 
where they could tuck a little speed cola can or something like that into a corner there under a bed behind a bed behind a kitchen table like do this so many places <laughs> it would be a freaking nightmare man okay anyway I don't know how much they really tell you about Zadaki sir but I've seen it I've felt it no matter how big this cold war is between east and west Requiem and Omega. There's an even bigger one threatening to boil over. We are interested in them. Eager to know how we can exploit their world for our advantage. But believe me, they're just as interested in us. The door swings both ways. Just talking about, you know, the Dark Ether, what's coming. It's going to be a, a bigger war than... Requiem versus Omega, U.S. versus U.S.S.R., etc. What do you think of Liz? Sorry, <clears throat> I mean Elizabeth Gray, Doctor. I like her, even though I don't think she's actually a medical doctor. How are you feeling, by the way? Are you seeing any signs? I'm not the only one who's been exposed to the dark ether here. I'm the same person now as the one that you dealt with. But I think that I've changed. I try not to show it, but you can probably see it in my eyes. I can see it in yours, too. I hope we are okay. I don't know who she's actually talking to there. I don't know. That's kind of... I don't remember at the time, like, I don't know if there was some kind of thing about it. Remember. Sometimes it's hard to remember how all this started. Do you feel the same? We are all soldiers. We are all fighting our wars for our countries, for our brothers, for our sisters. When you're faced with a seemingly insurmountable threat, it's easy to forget how it all began. Or to imagine how it all ends. The Dark Aether threatens to consume us all. That much I'm sure of. And that's why I fight. It holds a power over us. And I think I'm afraid that it could one day consume me. I've seen it. I've felt it. I've questioned my role. Did Weaver tell you that I was the one who caused the outbreak at Outpost 25? Even if he didn't say it out loud, I think he may be right. No matter what happens, I hope all of you will find the strength in your hearts to do what is right. Whenever you are faced with a great darkness, you must do all you can to meet it with Light. This is something Ravenoff knew. He knew he could no longer stand by as Omega's evil reigned. That is true courage. I hope I can do the same. Uh, Max's badge, a memento, memento. <clears throat> From Max's days as an agent in the West German BND, end station videotape. Video cassette tape Max is smuggled to Weaver, the triggered Requiem's investigation of Project End Station. It's the video that we saw in the trailer for uh, Outbreak. Oh, uh, excuse me, for D Machina for Cold War Zombies. Lost Souls, Fedorov, number two. It's Fedorov, Omega Group. We have been reassigned from Ethereum mining duties. That task now falls to Vermin enemies of the state but now they expect us to map the dark ether that is what Pack calls this place <laughs> I would like to see him try to survey this this madness they've seen things out here unspeakable things and today usually large groups of the infected are chaotic mindless mobs 
but today I found hundreds of them strangely grouped under clothing. Were they uniforms? I dared not get too close, but but they looked like. No. No, that cannot be right. It, it surely cannot be. This place, it. it plays tricks on you. I. I. I just need to get some sleep. Don't know who, like, what the large group of people he was talking about, like, uh, was supposed to be, to be honest with you. I don't remember at the moment. Um. Okay. Uh, day 6,421. Again, this is from Zykov, who turned out to be the Forsaken. Every time it says, like, day, number, blah, 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 that was what, you know, again, who turned out to be the Forsaken. Uh, and who will, well, whatever. It's later, and we're not going to get to that. Don't worry about it. Uh, I must be honest with myself. I knew there would be no truce with those men. I knew it would end in bloodshed. He's talking about these, uh, he ran into other people in there, and they took his stuff, and then, um, even though, like, they had taken his stuff, he went to go try to, you know, Refriend them basically because this is in the dark either because it's all they're you know they're human so he, he was trying but whatever uh, they stole my crucible but they didn't understand what it was too that too bad for them I had already used it uh, use it on my own weapon five men and I still outgun them five human lives too easy why don't I feel worse about killing them is my humanity slipping away will I end up just another beast prowling this land not just any other beast kind of the beast. Day 6,457, finally starting to shake off dark thoughts. Cannot allow myself to sink into savagery. This land will not break me. Technology is the key. I'm only alive, alive because I rebuilt that crucible. Must keep working, must keep building. I'll return to my transmitter project. Someone will answer my calls, and I will warn the world of the threat that faces uh, it faces from this place of darkness. Um, he will finish the transmitter, and we will speak to him later. Uh, in the game. Much more to tell you. My friend, I will share more journal entries later. I hope you have come to understand what my life has been like over here. I wouldn't wish it on anyone. I have so much more to tell you. Things I hope you will find useful in the struggles to come. But for now, I must go hunt. I will contact you again soon. Hello again, my friend. I am pleased that you are still alive and still in this fight. I know it has been too long since I last contacted you, but my years trapped in darkness taught me the value of caution. So I've been observing you and your compatriots. Please understand, I had to be sure I could trust you. What I have seen in is your courage in the face of unspeakable horrors and your devotion to each other. It has restored my faith in humanity and my resolve to defend our world. I still have many questions, but they can wait for later. <clears throat> Divided world. One reason I was so wary is that I have observed how the world has changed since I was trapped here. You've come so far in so many ways, but still... I look back on the Great War against the Axis powers. I remember East and West uniting against a great evil. I always thought that with the evil defeated, we would move forward together. But as the years roll by, I have watched an icy hatred split the world in two. You can utterly destroy each other now. All it takes is one careless moment. I fear nothing was learned from the war. I see a third world war in the making. I can stand by no longer. Help me save you from the darkness and from yourselves. <clears throat> Trust me. My friend, I see that your people have harnessed the dark powers of this place and turned them against the darkness itself. Your superiors may even believe they uh, they have all they need to end this conflict between worlds and then force uh, your human enemies to their knees. But you have only scratched the surface. I have learned things in my time here that you could scarcely believe. There is much more I can share with you. But just as I would not place a rifle in a child's hands, I must be sure I am not handing a much more destructive force to those without the wisdom to use it. May our bond grow deeper. May you pr uh, truly prove worthy of my trust. <clears throat> this is um, Zykov basically stringing us along. More to follow. Communicating with you uh, like this has meant more to me than I can say. It saved me from despair. It gave me something I thought long lost. Hope for the future. But words on a screen are not enough. I hunger for the sound of your voice. I long to speak to someone who is free of this soul-crushing place. So... I'm working to make this system capable of producing sound. I may not be able to establish a two-way connection, but at the very least, I would have you hear my voice. There is so much more to tell you. Your lives may depend on it. Again, that's uh, Zykov making these things uh, from the Dark Ether, communicating with us. Pilter. <laughs> there was a crooked man. 
and he went a crooked mile. He found a crooked sixpence against a crooked style. He bought a crooked cat, which caught a crooked mouth. And they all live together in a little crooked house. <laughs> This is Zykov. I do not know what you imagined <clears throat> I might sound like, but I, I am no one special. Just a man who wants to help. Yes. As you can tell from my accent, I am Russian. I, I did not tell you this at first because of the suspicion it would have provoked. Such is the age you grew up in. Such is this cold war. But there was a time when my people and yours fought side by side against the greatest evil our world ever produced. Now we face something even worse. Perhaps that can bring us all back together. Please, deaths! The signal is starting to fade. Uh, I will work on this problem and contact you later. Do not give up on me. I will not give up on you. So you see, he was saying, like, I'm going to try to work so you can, you know, there's not going to be a two-way communication, but at least that way he'll be able to hear my voice. And then he actually ended up making it happen. Uh, and once again, that is uh, Zykov, who turned out to be the Forsaken. Hello, it is me again, your friend on the other side. Are you enjoying the beautiful Euro Mountains? <laughs> no? <laughs> Believe me, I understand. It is hard to love a place that is always trying to kill you. By now, you have probably met some new enemies. Hmm? The electric men that float in midair. The armored monsters that leap and throw fire. I do my best to steer clear of them here, but avoiding conflict is not a luxury you can afford. I have I have managed to kill a few of the floaters, but it is never easy. The cowards jump away when injured, and they can strike from afar. The armored ones, on the other hand, they jump at you when provoked. They were once Soviet fighters who, who came here looking for crystals. And they paid with their lives. They are vicious and hard to put down. Hit them with everything you have. Such beasts must not be allowed to walk the earth. It's just giving you ideas of you know how to deal with the various mini bosses that we have in the game and you know etc 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 uh an empty jug can symbol monkey toy uh ivan's head 
the head of the test dummy mounted on the arsenal boys. Oh, that's the upgrade station. I didn't, I didn't, honestly completely forgot. I don't know if I ever really fully took it in. His name is Ivan. Okay. Um. All right. I, I didn't know that. Mystery box bunny, a stuffed rabbit toy of unknown origin. Okay. Um. So that was season two. Uh. Initially, I was going to go into season three, but um. <clears throat> And I, I don't really blame anybody for not being into this, but nobody is into this. Um, <clears throat> uh, we're going over Intel from a game that came out three and a half years ago, and it's not the most uh, fun thing to look at. Ahmed, what's up, guys? Good to see you again. Um, so we're just gonna we're just gonna cut it there and just cut our losses. What's the point? Um, and again, I understand, like, it's just listening to documents, looking at papers, and hearing me read through those papers. So, nothing particularly exciting. But, um, I'm going to keep going through this stuff my, on my own, you know, in my free time. And, um, so tomorrow is Sunday. Uh, we're going to get back to gameplay streams. We're not going to be doing this stuff anymore. Uh, like I said, because you guys just aren't digging it. So, that's, which is fine. Um, uh... Just kind of letting you know what's coming up. So I, I don't know what right now. Modern Warfare Three, I, I probably you know the new season starts on the third, I believe, which is next Wednesday, maybe. Um, but Zombies isn't getting anything new, so it it kind of doesn't matter from from uh, that perspective. We have another month to go until Zombies gets anything, and it's not a lot that we're getting. So. Um, there will be weekly challenges and things like, you know, we did the, finished up the camo challenges and stuff from, uh, <clears throat> from, uh, what was it called? Like we did, we did like the vortex challenge and we got the ultimate camo for doing all the challenges for eight weeks or, you know, five out every week we did complete the challenge. Uh, I think it would be great if you play BO2. I mean, we're going to be playing a lot of stuff coming up. Uh, I'm in. So, um, yeah, I mean, you can count on it. Um, <clears throat> so what exactly will stuff will be like I don't know I don't really want to even map out like hey Mondays are BO1 Tuesdays are BO2 like or do anything like that um, but we'll probably be doing like I said M uh, MW3 zombies like once a week maybe maybe twice a week just to kind of keep up with what's going on in the game any kind of nerfs buffs um Again, like those the weekly challenges uh, that goes on over there, um, and then other than that, we're just gonna be playing some. We'll play some Cold War. We'll play some IW, maybe play some EXOs, maybe um, BO2, BO1, BO3, BO4. Zombies is what we're gonna do. So, um, so that's it, really. Uh, kind of a shame a little bit that we didn't really we're not gonna be able to get get through all of the intel Ooh, fix that the top of my desk was moving a little bit uh but at the same time like i said i completely understand we're looking we're just listening to recordings that's what i was saying about the intel to begin with like how they dispersed it in cold war in that game where it was literally you know you kill uh, an HVT or a mini boss of some kind and it literally drops a piece of paper on the ground and you pick it up. Or it's you go stand in a corner and listen to a radio. Or you go find a little, again, like the jug can or Ivan's head that we were just looking at. Um, and you're collecting these artifacts. Like, okay. It's just, it's, it's a lot of intel to go through to get story, you know, stuff going on where you... Really, especially if you're playing solo, you don't have time to look at it in game. You or you flat out can't just stop and listen to a radio in game when you're solo. Like you have to then wait till you exit the game, find that particular piece of intel that you just found, you know, in game. Find the recording or whatever it is. Make sure that you remember which one it was. Search through your stuff and go. Okay, then play that and then listen to it and be like, oh, okay, that's what they were saying. Oh, okay, all right, cool. You know, like. I think it's better when you can do it in game itself, but at the same time, you know, Charker have always given us radios that have given us story um, in them. So there's nothing new as far as that goes. I mean, that's just how they do it. 
And part of it is like, well, how else are they supposed to do it? Like, there's a lot of info that they're giving out. Um, you can't literally just have your characters nonstop just yapping about this and that happened, and then this happened, and then this happened, and then this happened, and then this happened. And this. Like, we're, we're trying to do an Easter egg here, or we're going through and like, or just shut up, please. Like, it's too much. So, I fully get it. Um, and I really don't think it's any different from what has happened in years past. I think it might have been more in Cold War than has been in years past, as far as like actual literal, literal, like amount of radio transmissions, amount of radios that you can listen to, broadcast things, uh, tapes pieces of paper, whatever. Other stuff was, other years were like on, like on BO3, like there would be, um, there might be like a cipher or something behind a, a barrier or wherever and, or there might be a radio in Samantha's room or, you know, Maxis's room or Rick Toffin's room from there, you know, um, you could listen to or something like that, but it wasn't like too, too much stuff. <clears throat> the radio in, in the command center, AKA I call it church. You know, it's not a church. I call it church, though. Um, <clears throat> so whatever. It's just how they did. It's fine. Um, but anyways, we're we're done with that. We're not going to go through it again. I'm not going to do another stream on it. Um, it'd just be a waste of my time and yours. So not entirely sure if I'll stream tomorrow night or wait till Monday. But uh, either way, I'll see you in the next day or two. Anyhow, have a great rest of your weekend, and I'll catch up with you guys soon.